call to order. This is the ninth regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. Nothing can stop a person with the right mental attitude from achieving their goal. Nothing on earth can help a person with the wrong mental attitude. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren. Here. Bauk. Excused. Bowers. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Montemayor. Here. Radke. Here. Rindfleisch. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Versi. Here. And Wangeman. Here. 14 present. We have a quorum looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. Do you want to do the pledge first, Oh, first let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. And uh, if Alderman Rindfleisch can lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Eric. Now we can get the meeting underway with the roll call, please. We did that. Oh, with the <laughs> approval of the minutes, please. I'd make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous second. meeting dated July 19th, 2010. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. First, there's an email from uh, Jim Gisha advising that he's resigning from the council. Uh, looking I'd for ask a motion for a to, motion accept, and to accept and file the resignation. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Attorney McLean. And there's <clears throat> A letter from Randy Schwerer to uh, Alan Rudnick advising uh, that he's no longer able to serve on the bid board. And uh, Randy Schwerer will not be able to serve because he is now the executive director of the bid. We have a motion to accept and file. Motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And another letter that was addressed to uh, Alan Rudnick advising that uh, Dawn Seifert was uh, resigning from the bid board as she no longer has a business in the district. I'd make a motion to accept and file. Second. I have a motion to accept and file and a second under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> That's all for our resignations this evening. Uh, moving on to mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. The first one is dated today. I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Alderman Don Hammond to be appointed to the following committees to fill the unexpired term of James Gisha. Strategic Fiscal Plan Committee, Capital Improvements Commission, City County Shared Services Committee, Sheboygan Transit Commission, Special Committee on Risk Management. Alderman Eric Rinfleisch to be appointed to the Finance Committee to fill the unexpired term of James Gisha. Alderman Don Hammond will replace James Gisha as Chairman of the Finance Committee. Alderperson James Bourne to be appointed to the Industrial Development Commission to fill the unexpired term of Jim Gisha, whose term expires uh, on that 4-16-2012, and the other committees, it's 4-18-2011. Signed by the Mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean, and if I may explain for the uh, council and the general public, the five committees, um, Strategic Fiscal Planning, Capital Improvements, Shared Services, Transit, and the Committee on Risk Management, uh, those committees automatically are filled by the uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee. So with uh, Alderman Hammond, if he is, appro if he is uh, um, uh, approved to uh, replace Jim Gisha as the chairman of finance, those, those committees automatically come along with them. Uh, uh, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, do we need suspension on the appointment for Alderman Hammond to the Redevelopment Authority? And if we do, I'd make a motion to suspend. Uh, the Redevelopment Authority is on a separate Second sheet. Separate. Redevelopment Authority? Uh, yes. Right, right now we oh, are on all right. a very good. Friends. 
And do we need a mayor on motion to suspend the rules? I'd make that motion to suspend the rules on the... Uh, we, we do not need a motion to suspend on these documents okay. here. I'd make a motion to accept. We'd no, make we a would, motion to accept. No, we would actually lie, lie over. over. This will lie over. Until next meeting. Very good. Sorry, Don. Robert Ryan to be appointed to the Tax Incremental District TID Number 6 Joint Review Board. Uh, that lies over till next week, next council meeting. Hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Mark Miller to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority to fill the unexpired term of Richard Hires, whose term expires on 4-28-2014. Signed by the Mayor. I'd make a motion to suspend the rules on that, please. We have a motion to suspend the rules. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, if I may explain the reason that we need to suspend the rules on this is the, uh, with the redevelopment authority, uh, we have a couple of very important meetings coming up and we need to make sure that we have a quorum for those meetings. Is there anybody opposed to suspending the rules? There's nobody opposed, the rules are suspended. I'd make a motion then to accept the appointment Accept and adopt the second. Appointment. We have a motion and, and a second to accept. Under discussion. If there is none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, we need to do a roll call. Roll call on this. Um, Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wongman? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Alderman Don Hammond to be appointed to the Redevelopment Authority to fill the unexpired term of James Gishu, whose term expired 4 18 2011. Signed by the Mayor. Motion to. Uh, motion to suspend the rules on this, please. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Again, this is Redevelopment Authority with a couple of very important meetings coming up. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? There's no opposition, the rules are suspended. I'd make a motion then to approve the appointment. Second. A motion, to a motion and a second to approve the appointment under discussion. There is no discussion, roll call please. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. And Alderman Hammond, we have a meeting this Thursday. Be there. <clears throat> Attorney McLean. James Pregitz to be considered for appointment to the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners to fill the unexpired term of Angela Sukavich, whose term expires 4 28 2014. And David Soxie to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority to fill the unexpired term of Glenn Pilling, whose term expires on 4 28 2014. I'd make a motion to confirm both appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second to confirm under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bowers. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. We are all finished with appointments. Uh, we now have the election of the Vice President of the Common Council. I would move President that. Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I would move that nominations, actually here, I will stand up. I move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list <coughs> and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority of the votes. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. I'm sorry, who seconded that? Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The floor will now be open for nominations. Are there any nominations from the floor? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, it's an honor for me to nominate uh, Alderman Rinfleisch for Vice President. Do we have a second? Second. second. 
We have a motion and a second uh, for Alderman Rindfleisch. <coughs> Do we have any other nominations from the floor? Uh, Alderman Heideman. It is my honor to uh, uh, recommend uh, Mark Hanna for Vice President of the Common Council. We have a nomination for Alderman Hanna for Vice President. Do we have a second? Alderman Hanna? I would not like to uh, serve as Vice President. Alderman Hanna does not want to serve as Vice President. Anybody want to second him anyway? <laughs> Ooh. Okay, we do not have a second. Um, so we only have one person nominated. Then I move. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the nominations be closed and that the city clerk be directed to cast a unanimous ballot for Alderman Eric Reinfleisch for Vice President of the Council. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for Vice President Eric Rindfleisch. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, Vice President Rindfleisch. <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to pack your stuff and move desks now or not, but. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what protocol is. Okay, uh, moving on, uh, public forum, Sue? Yes, um, first this evening would be Delcy Johnson. <clears throat> Delcy, I need your home address, please. 13, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. 1306 North 3rd. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Mayor Ryan, City Clerk Richards, City Attorney McLean, members of the Council, and citizens. On July 21st, the Committee of the Whole discussed Alderman Versey's status regarding voting on ambulance-related documents. At the July 19th Council meeting, Alderman Radke moved to file the document, but the majority of the Council voted for referral to the Committee of the Whole. So now the door has been opened. The day after the Committee of the Whole meeting, I had a conversation with an acquaintance who does not get involved in city politics or issues who said to me, what about Alderman Kittleson? She votes on fire department and ambulance issues and her husband is a retired Sheboygan firefighter. Many people have for a long time questioned Alderman Kittleson's voting on fire department and ambulance issues, including her vote in support of the fire department taking over the ambulance service from Orange Cross. Is it a matter of ethics or just bias? To me, by her bias is obvious. <clears throat> For example, I never heard her comment in any way on the Greater Sheboygan Committee's white paper on the fire department and ambulance. But at the June 30th Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting, she said that Chief Herman's responses were excellent. Actually, many think the white paper is excellent and deserves further consideration by the council. So is it a matter of ethics or is it just bias? In the interest of full transparency and to remove any shadow or doubt, I am asking that the Committee of the Whole discuss this. To do otherwise would be hypocritical. As former Alderman Geisha would say, it's a no-brainer. <clears throat> A document calling for a referendum on the ambulance issue has been referred to the Finance Committee, the Public Protection and Safety Committee, and the Committee of the Whole. I attended the Finance Committee and Public Protection and Safety Committee meetings. Both committees voted to hold the document because they want to know the financial information related to a budget without the ambulance, and Chief Herman wants to present his scenarios for the fire department without the ambulance. The question before the committees is to just say yes or no to allow the question on the ballot in November. And then the council will have two and a half months to inform the citizens about the ramifications of a yes or no vote on the question. At the Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting, Alderman Montemayor stated that if she did not like the financial in information, she would not vote to allow the referendum. In other words, she would deny her constituents their right to vote on the issue. As Alderman Heidemann has said, looking back, perhaps the council had, should have put it to a referendum in 2007. 
The Committee of the Whole will be discussing and possibly acting on this issue at their meeting at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, August 4th. I urge all citizens to call your aldermen and ask them to support putting the ambulance question on the ballot in November so that your voice can be heard. <clears throat> During the discussion of emails at the Committee of the Whole meeting, Alder McLean talked about walking quorums, which again brought to mind how the fire department came to assume the ambulance service from Orange Cross. I and others believe that it was accomplished through a walking quorum. A walking quorum is defined as a series of gatherings among separate groups of members of a governmental body, each less than quorum size, who agree tacitly or explicitly to act uniformly in sufficient number to reach a quorum. The danger is that a predetermined outcome will result in a publicly held meeting being a mere formality without any real discussion or consideration of the issue being conducted in public. The use of a walking quorum is subject to prosecution under the open meeting law. In May 2007, I was told that the Saturday before it was planned that the council would vote on the ambulance issue and before the citizens had even heard about it, then Mayor Perez and one or two aldermen visited the homes of other aldermen to convince them to support the idea. Thus, in effect, the votes were cast before the document even reached the council floor and before the citizens had any knowledge of the proposal. A three-man hold deferred the vote at that council meeting, but the public never really had the opportunity to weigh in on the issue. It is important for the public to finally have that opportunity, and I trust that the Council will allow that to happen by supporting the document asking for a referendum on the November ballot. Again, I urge all citizens to call your aldermen and ask them to support your right to be heard. Thank you. Thank you, Dulcie. Thank you, Dulcie. Um, I don't normally respond to a uh, public forum, but I, I feel in defense of President Kittleson, I must in this case. Um, Gene Kittleson is an alderman and now is president of the council, has always abstained on, on, on issues regarding fire department insurance um, for retirees. Her husband is under the Wisconsin Retirement Fund that this council has no, no jurisdiction over. The only benefit that alderperson Kittleson gets from the city is the retirement insurance of which she has abstained on votes on insurance every time in my four years involved in, in, in this city, on this, on this council and as the mayor of the city. So to try to drag her through the mud on this issue is not right. Alderperson Kittleson is a fine individual, a fine citizen of the city. Um, she has no financial gain by voting to have an ambulance service in the fire department. Her husband is retired under the Wisconsin Retirement Fund. So I just want my views to be clear. Next. All right, next on the list is Joanne Decker. You may want to pull the microphone down a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> Can I have your address, please, Joanne? N884 Kennebrath Road, Cedar Grove, Wisconsin. All right, and you will have five minutes. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, speak about the resolution. I, again, I'm Joanne Decker. I'm uh, president of Local 1564. Um, I'm here to discuss the resolution of outsourcing the cleaners. Um, I just want to let you guys know that uh, we have three dedicated, hardworking, excellent cleaners here in the city, one full-timer and two part-timers. Um, I'm just wondering if you guys have really looked at all the avenues here. Have, have you looked at maybe using those three cleaners cleaning the <coughs> police department? Um, I really truly believe that they could do both. They've done that in the past when the police department was here and they've done an excellent job. Everybody's been commenting here how well City Hall looks. Uh, they do more than just clean. They help us seeing that we're shorthanded in IT. Every time we have something that we need to have moved, they're right there to help us. I've seen them assisting um, uh, people down in the lobby. I mean, they're, they're very good and they do absolutely more than just cleaning. Um, uh, has anybody spoke to the individuals, mostly in criminal investigation division, how that is working out? Um, I know periodically when I'm over there working on their PCs, they you know, will have some comments and I've, I know I contacted a few older persons just to contact them 
um, before making your decision. And before you make your decision tonight, I just want everybody to be aware that we did ratify our contract in good faith um, this past December. And in our contract, it says all part-timers need to be laid off before full-timers. So that means that we have, I believe, seven uh, part-timers in our union yet that need to be laid off before that one full-timer is going to be laid off. Um, so if this resolution does go forward, it will result in a grievance from the union. Um, um, and I guess I, I would hate to see that happen, um, the cost to the city, plus just to lose three dedicated, wonderful employees of the city. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. More on public forum? That would be it for this evening. Okay, that is all for public forum. Um, now my favorite time of the day, the mayor's announcements, as we all know, also known as the time of pontification. A um, <coughs> couple, uh, couple positive issues here. Um, in the quest to get an emergency call box at, the, uh, at King Park, um, the local Firefighters 483, the International Association of Firefighters, has stepped up and donated $500 to the cause. And also, uh, Chief Herman has taken $500 out of his own pocket for the cause. So we are up to $2,000 on our, on our call box on the, on the uh, south side. Um, Alderman Hanna previously donated uh, 1000 which we greatly appreciate. So uh, we did have another death, another drowning death out by, uh, out by uh, the uh, power plant in that, in that area. Um, these call boxes are, are definitely uh, important. We feel for the family of the young man that was lost. Uh, it just tells us how important this is, and we appreciate people stepping up. Uh, we're still looking for about another $1,500 so we can do this uh, free of taxpayers, taxpayer money. So thank you again uh, to Chief Herman, to the Sheboygan Firefighters, and to Alderman Hanna. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, we did have a uh, fire out in the uh, town of Wilson, um, which we responded to with... Uh, an aerial ladder and a crew all night on, on Wednesday night um, for mutual aid from the city. Uh, Thursday and Friday, we had uh, two crews out there for Thursday and Friday, um, assisting out in the town of Wilson. Um, on uh, Thursday and Friday, I understand, um, there was nobody else available to fight that fire because of the um, Black River Fire Department, the other volunteer fire departments that came in Thursday or Wednesday night, I understand that our fire department was basically there by manning the fire on, uh, on, on Thursday and Friday. We also have moved our city command post out there to assist on Thursday. It's still out there at the scene of the fire. This was an arson fire. Uh, from what I understand, it was set in three different spots. Um, it just, uh, I would like to thank our fire department for, for being there. Um, and especially for being there a couple days when other fire departments were not available uh, to be there. So I thank uh, Chief Herman and the, and the crews for doing their job. Moving on. Um, I'd like to uh, make a response here to an, an editorial that came out in the Sheboygan Press. Uh, this was on July 30th. Uh, this editorial is uh, titled, City Hall Losing Too Many Good People. It's the editorial of the Sheboygan Press. Um, it says, uh, talking about the, uh, uh, this came after the resignation of President Gisha from the council. While Gisha didn't list specifics, among the issues the city has faced in the last few years include Mayor Bob Ryan's issue with alcohol and the allegations against the mayor from Angela Payne. He's absolutely right, meaning Alderman Gisha, when he said these things sidetrack us from important work but do nothing to move the city forward. Moving down, it is likely that some of the issues prompting Gisha to leave were also factors in the departures of others, all of which weaken the ability of city government to function smoothly. The city cannot afford to be losing good people, department heads, supervisors, and aldermen over matters unrelated to the running of the city. Now, I do not expect the Sheboygan press to be professional enough to be unbiased in their reporting. However, I do ask them to tell the truth. 
The Sheboygan Press has had interviews with, I know, two of the three department heads that have left our city. And if I'm not mistaken, those department heads gave the Sheboygan Press a different story other than them leaving over matters unrelated to the running of the city. All I ask is that the Sheboygan Press starts telling the truth. I know those interviews are out there, yet they seem to have disappeared. The Sheboygan Press also knows why President Gisher resigned, yet they have decided not to put that story out there either. As I said, I don't expect unbiased reporting, but I do expect the truth. And I'm calling on the Sheboygan Press in the future to at least print the truth. That's all I ask. Um, being constantly negative does nothing to move our city forward. It does absolutely nothing. You know, life is not a big conspiracy. Everybody in this room tries to do their best to do what is best for the city. And to have the truth out there and yet not be reported, um, or basically untruths to be reported, is not professional journalism, in my opinion. You know, I was watching, a, uh, watching an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants with my children this past weekend. Actually, they were watching it. I was you know, just, just there. Um, and I don't know if anybody's familiar with SpongeBob. You know, my wife Pain, doesn't like pain, my kids. Painfully so, yes. Yeah, my, my wife doesn't like my kids to watch it because she thinks it's a bad influence on them. But you know, when I'm alone with them, I let them watch it anyway. Um, well, Mr. Krabs decided he wasn't making enough money in the, uh, uh, in the restaurant business, so he decided to go into the, into the newspaper business. So Mr. Krabs hired SpongeBob as his press reporter and put him out there and told SpongeBob to find anything that he can out about anybody and print it in the news because he's going to make a ton of money off selling newspapers. So SpongeBob went out there. Uh, by the way, the, uh, the, uh, the name of his paper was The Bottom Feeder. That was the name of his paper. Uh, so SpongeBob went out there and reported everything he could find out about every individual in their private lives, whether it was true or not, and Mr. Krabs made a ton of money. Um, of course, at the end of the story, uh, Mr. Krabs lost all his money when the pub general public came in and raided his place and took all his money because every one of them was mad at him uh, for reporting untruths. So that's a little story. Um, but uh, you know, it just goes to show you that responsible, responsible reporting uh, always wins in the long run. So that is all I have for my mayor's announcements for today. Um, I'm just calling on the Sheboygan Press to print the truth. Moving on. Consent agenda. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and all resolutions and ordinances be passed and all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, consent agenda 9-1 through 9-16 under discussion. <coughs> If there is none, roll call, please. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kaa. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ratke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangeman. Aye. Warren. Aye. And Bowers. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. <laughs> Communications and petitions, 917 and 918 to be referred. Reports of officers to 919 through 930 to be referred. 931 will be pulled. It is no longer pertinent. 931 is no longer a pertinent document. Resolutions introduce three, 9-32. Oh, we have some discussion. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry On about agenda that. item number 921 and 925, I would make a motion to file. 921 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Dulcie Johnson questioning Alderperson Kittleson's votes on fire department issues. And 925. 925 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Marge Mattern requesting that the mayor and the council mm. ask Alderperson Kittleson to abstain from discussing and voting on any future decisions concerning the fire department ambulance service, whether it be finances, building, et cetera. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, considering that John Kittleson retired in 2005, 
I don't think there's any possible way that there would be a monetary value to uh, Gene Kittleson voting on the ambulance when it hadn't, wasn't even in effect in 2005. Second. We have a motion to file. Do we have a second? Alderman Decker seconded. Under discussion on filing of those two documents. On filing the documents, roll call, please. We can do all eyes. Oh, we can do all eyes. All in favor say aye. 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 Shall I? I will abstain. Alderman Kittleson abstains. <laughs> all in, so we have ayes. Opposed? Aye. No. Aye. no. Aye. Okay, we will call. take a roll call vote. Sue? Okay, hold on a sec. And okay. I vote, Would we'll we file. We file these two documents. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? No. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? Epstein. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? No. Wangaman? No. Boren? No. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Six eyes, seven no's, one abstention. Motion to file fails. So it continues to be referred to Committee of the Whole. Will be referred to Committee of the Whole. Yep. Um, now we have a... Did we do an all I vote on the rest of them? On the? On the, it's just referred. referred. They, oh, okay, they are yeah. referred. 919 through 930 then will be referred. Uh, we are now on 931, uh, is being pulled as we said, 932 by Alderman Gisha approving the terms and conditions of the contract for lease of land and accompanying ground lease between the Redevelopment Authority and RNM Moeller LLC. Pre President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask for suspension of the rules on this, please. We have a motion to suspend the rules. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Under discussion, is there anybody opposed to suspending the rules? Or any question? Just looking for an explanation. Vice President Rinfleisch, explanation please, Jean. Oh, I believe we were just doing a correction on this. Am I, may I refer to the city? Was this? No, this. No, can I ask you to? This is uh, a proposal for an ice cream shop on the uh, oh. riverfront. All right. The molars uh, have developed several projects already. They've got a building, got Lino's restaurant, they've got the golf, miniature golf course. Uh, this would be a proposed ice cream shop okay. in the same general area along the riverfront. And uh, this, the rationale for suspension is a timing issue to get the process going. They, they want to get the place built before the snow flies, obviously. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thanks for stealing my thunder. That's what well I was going to say. <laughs> okay, yeah, is there anybody opposed to, to suspending now. the rules? Nobody is opposed. The rules are suspended. President Kittleson. I would ask that the resolution then be put upon its passage. We have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. President, or Alderman Boren. We'll get this straight eventually. Thank you, Mayor Thank you. Ryan. Uh, Attorney McLean, do you know what's going to be in the rest of the building? I know, but I think maybe the public should know. I talked to Chad Pelashek today. There's going to be the ice cream shop on the, on right. the, on the main floor, and then what's going to be in the, on the second floor? I believe uh, the, the lease calls for office on the second floor. I don't know that it's specified, but I think they might have uh, the molars might have their office up there. <coughs> uh, I can look at the ground lease here. I believe it calls for retail on the first floor and uh, office on the second floor. Right, I, I believe also that the, uh, there's going to be room on this building to add uh, some storage uh, to the uh, west um, or north whichever way that would be, depending on the curve of the river, um, for storage of uh, the outdoor uh, seating from Lino's Restaurant in the wintertime. So. Uh, found the provisions. Retail on the first floor and residential and our office purposes on the second floor for no other use except with landlord's prior written approval. Good. Sounds like a good development. Alderman Boren, good with that. Uh, Alderman Rinfleisch, did you have anything else? No. Just got old, old buttons here. Alderman Radke? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just request a roll call vote on this. I'd like to abstain. Very good. Uh, Any? 
I would also say the, the terms and conditions of the redevelopment uh, agreement and the ground lease are nearly identical to ones we've done uh, on the South Pier previously for the molars and for others uh, other than the Blue Harbor, which was uh, a different deal. But uh, the only uh, major difference here is the uses and uh, the rent is based on the square footage and it's the same calculation as on the other uh, sites along the riverfront. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Bowers? Yes, I've noticed that the, the value of this uh, lease is $70,000. Uh, that's for the uh, land. Is there any valuation put on the building or uh, we don't need to do that? Uh, we're not doing that for the, for the lease agreement. The, they'll be paying rent based on the value of the land. But it should be borne in mind that not only are the, will they be paying the rent payment, but they'll also be paying real estate tax on both the land and the improvements that they build on there. And under the redevelopment agreement, they're proposing to, uh, or the proposal is to invest a minimum of $450,000 worth of investment on oh. the site. All right, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Is there any other discussion? There is not, roll call please. Hannah? Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koss? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Epstein? Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. 13 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries 9 33 by Alderman Hanna lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a city assessor, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we don't have a city assessor now, so I would uh, put <clears throat> ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Passage under passage. discussion. Vice President Rinfleisch. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, my question is, since we have several of the hiring freeze questions coming uh, in, in this as well, and many of them involve replacing someone that is no longer uh, working with us. Um, was the original language of the hiring freeze uh, providing an exception for places where we're replacing someone currently, uh, or did they all truly do need to come in front of the full council if that's all we're doing is simply, you know, we're not lifting the hiring freeze, meaning we're gonna add it to the TO, we're simply replacing somebody, is that correct? So I guess well, my question are, is- We are is, replacing somebody in this case, yes. So do the yeah. replacements need to come to, to the council all the time, or was that one of the exceptions that was provided in the hiring freeze? I believe, Alderman Rinfleisch, that the hiring freeze resolution applied to replacing persons who had, uh, had left the city as, as well. Uh, you know, that allowed the council to make a decision before replacing the person to decide whether or not you wanted to fill that position any longer. Very good, thank you. And the city assessor is one position that I think. Oh, yeah, I'm saying do we need we to? We probably need come to the council for all the ones that we have need to replace the I, I think the we have at this point we've come to the council with every every uh, replacement and new hire that we've had in the city so thank you vice president Rinfleisch. Uh, any further discussion on this issue if there is none roll call please Heideman aye Koth aye Kittleson aye Montemayor aye Radke aye Rinfleisch aye Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wongman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 9-34 by Alderman Hannah lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire an information technology manager who will report to the finance director treasurer, Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, ask that the resolution be put upon its pass. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I've had a discussion with uh, uh, Tom Rice about this, but uh, just so uh, it's clear, currently on the table of organization, there is no information technology manager position. It's an information technology director. Uh, However, uh, it's 
it's my understanding that the document will be forthcoming, assuming you agree to lift the hiring freeze to appoint an information technology manager. There'll be a, uh, an ordinance coming through to amend the table of organization. That requires a general ordinance change, uh, but that would be forthcoming. It was uh, set up previously that the uh, IT director um, acted as a department head. Uh, we're going to have the IT manager report to the director of finance, um, finance director treasurer, uh, which also I may throw in. Um, we do have two final candidates um, that came out of the Civil Service Commission today for um, our finance director. Um, I have a hiring team of five individuals five department heads of the city, uh, and we will hopefully be interviewing those two candidates this week. So. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 eyes. Motion carries. 9-35 by Alderperson Koth, authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of Schwebel Holdings LLC et al. versus the City of Sheboygan and Board of Review for the City of Sheboygan and authorizing payment for said services. Alderperson Koth. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. I move to suspend the rules. We second. have a motion to suspend the rules. Do we have a second? Second. Motion in a second uh, under discussion on suspension of the rules. <coughs> is there anybody opposed to suspending the rules? If there is not, the rules are suspended. Alderperson Koth. Uh, this document is 9-27. Uh, time is of the essence, and that is the reason for the suspension. May we have a uh, 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 motion to put the resolution upon its passage, please. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Uh, President Kittleson? Thank you. Are we, is it document 9-35? Yes. Yes, 9-35. Okay, thank you. If there is no discussion, roll call please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heidemann? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 9-36 by Alderpersons Hannah Kittleson and Versi lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a part-time cemetery supervisor slash administrative assistant in the Department of Public Works. Alderman Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Kittles. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 9-37 by Alderpersons Hannah Kittleson Vanderweel and Versi to approve the addendum to the 2010-2011 bargaining agreement between IAFF Local 483 Firefighters and the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Hannah. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I uh, would move that resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Bowers. Yes, although I've read the uh, document, I wish we, someone would explain it to us so the public would know what uh, where, uh, the addition is to the bargaining agreement. Alderman Hanna, would you like to explain that for Alderman Bowers? Absolutely. Um, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to read from the letter received by the Sheboygan Professional Sorry. Firefighters. Uh, the city of Sheboygan shall maintain a firefighting staff 
level of minimum of 67 members in the IAFF Local 43, <coughs> while the 2010-2011 contract is in effect. Since it may be impractical to have immediate filling of vacancies, the city would have up to 90 days to fill any vacancies that occurred. Effective January 1, 2011, through June 30, 2011, 1.5% of the employee's regular base pay will be deducted and applied to the employee contribution to health insurance premiums. This is in addition to the 10% premium share already being paid by the employees. Effective July 1, 2011 through December 31, 2011, 3% of the employee's regular base pay will be deducted and applied to the employee contribution to the health insurance premiums. This, again, is in addition to the 10%. In year 2011 only, employees will receive two days off to be taken in accordance with the uh, department's leave of absence policy. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, I want to thank Local 483 for stepping up to the plate and doing this. Uh, Alderman Hanna or Mr. Rice, do you know what the dollar amount of this concession will amount to? Alderman Hanna? Uh, roughly between ninety and $95,000. $95, $95, thank you. Between ninety and $95,000. Uh, thank you. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? No. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 9-38 by Alderpersons Hannah Kittleson, Vanderweel, and Versi lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a truck driver in the Department of Public Works, Alderman Hannah, once again. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. Warren? Aye. Bowers? <coughs> Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 9 39 by Alderpersons Hannah Kittleson, Vanderweel, and Versi, authorizing the Salary and Grievances Committee to review and act upon certain non represented employee salary slash wage issues. Alderman Hannah. Again. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. I think it's several pages before I have to do this again. Resol I ask that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wankerman. Aye. Boren. No. Bowers. <coughs> Aye. I'm sorry. Aye. Thank you. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. 9 40 lies over. Um, 9 41 uh, is a duplicate, so that will be pulled. Uh, 9 41A through 43 to be referred. 9-44 to be referred. That's report of committee six. 9-44 to be referred. Reports of committee seven. 9-45 by law and licensing recommending that beverage operators license number 8077 be denied based upon the applicant's failure to include all relevant convictions on the application record of violations related to the licensed activity and failure to cooperate with the committee. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Thank you, Your Honor. Is uh, Stephanie Garcia here? Stephanie's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Um, Stephanie Garcia was uh, recommended for denial based on her non-cooperation. She had two opportunities to attend the committee meeting and did not do so. Uh, she did call me on Thursday uh, on the 29th um, stating that 
Uh, she worked until 8 o'clock and was not able to attend. However, she did not actually notify us the previous two. So basically, that's a month worth of time that she did not communicate th that with us. Uh, furthermore, the police department has a negative recommendation uh, on her license. Thank you, Vice President Rindfleisch. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Rindfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wonkerman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? <clears throat> Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 9-46 by law and licensing recommending that beverage operators license number 5903 be denied based upon a conviction which makes him ineligible to hold the license. Vice President Rindfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt. Thank you. Uh, is Mr. Feldy here? Or Mrs. Feldy? We're not entirely sure. Um, as the description uh, had stated, um, the conviction that is upon uh, Jesse Feldy makes that person ineligible to hold the license, therefore we recommend denial. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Rindfleisch? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of committees 8, 9-47 by finance recommending authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract to develop a refined redevelopment and TIF project plan for the Indiana Avenue corridor and passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Could we have the substitute resolution? Uh, accept and adopt in the substitute resolution oh. to be put yeah. upon its passage. Thanks. Do we have a second on that one? Second. We have a motion and a second and a third. <laughs> Under discussion. If there is no discussion, roll call, please. Versi. Aye. Wonkaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rindfleisch. Aye. And Vanderweel. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 9-48 by finance recommending authori authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget establish appropriations for improvements at Mead Library for the Moss Center and establish revenue and appropriation for donations received for Independence Day celebrations. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Uh, Second. And uh, that uh, be accepted and adopted. And the resolution be put upon its passage. We have a motion and a second on that under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Wangman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 9-49 by salary and grievances recommending referral back to the council without a positive recommendation regarding resolution number 63-10-11 by Alderpersons Gisha and Boren authorizing accepting the bid from quality cleaning of Sheboygan for the cleaning of City Hall. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt. And I'd also, if there's a second, I'd also ask that uh, uh, Director of Human Resources, uh, Tom Rice, be given an opportunity to speak because he was quite influential on my perception. Second. Do you okay. want the resolution to be passed to open yes. the discussion? Passed and open for discussion. Open for discussion. Okay, we have a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution for purposes of discussion. Correct. <clears throat> and uh, do we have a second on that? We have a second from President Kittleson, and we have a motion to open the floor to Tom Rice. Second. We have a motion to second to open the floor to Tom Rice. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Director Rice.
Ladies and gentlemen of the council, <clears throat> the reason I feel so, so strongly about this resolution is because uh, two primary reasons. As you heard uh, Joanne Decker say earlier this evening, should we proceed with this, the union is going to go ahead and file a grievance. Uh, this is different than other uh, outsourcing situations, primarily uh, the one with uh, cutting down trees, because in this particular situation, there are going to be three people that are going to lose their job. <clears throat> At this point in time, uh, if you pass this, that would cause us to lay those three people off or certainly uh, displace them, but three people would end up walking out the door somewhere, if not more. And uh, we would be battling uh, for months going forward through the grievance procedure and the arbitration procedure. My best estimate is that we would have less than a 50% chance of winning that in arbitration. If we lose that in arbitration, the ramifications of that are that any more outsourcing that we would attempt to do would be at best an upward battle and the precedent would already have been established that we had lost one arbitration in it. Uh, when we had the Salaries and Grievance Committee meeting, I cautioned the committee that there are other uh, opportunities that I think we're going to face in the future that give us a much better chance of winning uh, the whole outsourcing argument. Secondly, um, in conversation for salaries and grievance, the reason this was introduced by Alderman Gisha was to precipitate the savings that would result from that. Uh, and I said to salaries and grievance, as I will say to you tonight and plead with you, uh, the council has already set forth uh, requirements for the 2011 fiscal year budget. I would ask the council to give the department heads the opportunity to take and put that budget together, hopefully within the guidelines that you've established for us, without legislating things, changes such as this. Uh, there's opportunities that we can take advantage of to work cooperatively with our unions and to see if we can't secure the savings, uh, hopefully, without the reduction of any personnel. So I would beg you to seriously consider not passing this resolution, giving us time to put the budget together, and moving forward. Thank, Thank you, you, Tom. Alderman Recchi. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Director Rice, could you explain to us uh, what is behind your feeling that we'd have a less than 50% chance in arbitration? Um, if you're taking and talking about going to arbitration, when there are jobs to be lost, arbitrators typically uh, are not going to be particularly uh, lenient with uh, uh, employers. Uh, they would ask you to find other ways and use that only as a matter of last recourse. So, answer your question, Dennis. Can that uh, Attorney McLean, uh, I can address the issue uh, somewhat too, and I didn't bring the case citations, but there are a couple of state Supreme Court cases dealing with the attempts to uh, outsource uh, city uh, labor work where the, uh, there, there's two scenarios. One is the type of situation where the city were to get out of the business. In other words, garbage collection as an example. If the council chose to uh, get out of the garbage collection business and just let private industry handle garbage. That is a decision you could make. The uh, union could grieve that, but uh, I'm confident that that would be a successful uh, determination uh, as far as uh, doing away with the bargaining unit work. Uh, however, the courts uh, felt, as I say, in a couple of state Supreme Court cases where the city is not getting out of the business but merely looking to save a, a dollar, uh, you can't just unilaterally contract out bargaining unit work without bargaining with the union uh, as a matter of uh, uh, right. It's a mandatory subject of bargaining. So that's, that's my opinion to uh, where the, uh, the police department building was different was that there was no precedent set there. Uh, we didn't have a police department building and uh, therefore contracting out that work was not taking uh, current union work and uh, contracting it out. So I'd be very apprehensive uh, 
uh, in supporting proposal to uh, privatize the janitorial service in City Hall without bargaining that decision with the unions. Uh, I understand that there may be financial savings to, to doing that, and you may be tempted to say, well, what the heck, let's go for it anyway and see where the chips fall. Uh, my advice is not to do that. I guess one other technical issue I have with the resolution is the be it further resolved at the end states that the table of organization be adjusted to represent this change and uh, the table of organization is adopted by ordinance and you cannot uh, amend an ordinance by way of resolution. Uh, ordinances uh, have a higher degree of precedence so you can only amend an ordinance by an ordinance so uh, that portion of the resolution uh, would be null and void. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Under further discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question for uh, Mr. Rice. Uh, one thing we would have on our side of the ledger, though, uh, Mr. Rice, is that we have a previous practice here at City Hall that at one time the uh, City Hall cleaning was done by an outside firm. Isn't that correct? Yes, you're absolutely correct. Uh, we did that at, the, at uh, the time when the cleaner at that point in time retired. There would be, at that point in time, no one was displaced. There was no reason for the union to grieve that. The circumstances in this particular situation are different. But if, 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 you, if they did file a grievance, you would have that history on our side of the ledger, though, that it was private at one time. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I also, uh, for, the, uh, for the public out there, uh, the current cost for cleaning City Hall with the two part-time people and the full-time person is $144,200 annual, annually. Uh, the, the bid that, uh, that uh, we accepted if we go forward with this is from Quality Cleaning, which is a Sheboygan business. Uh, it's estimated, well, the first year, the first year they, will, they would do it for $60,240 versus the 144,002. The second year of the contract, it would be 6247, and the third year, $63,908. As an, and, and as it says in the resolution, at the end of three years, this would be a savings to the taxpayers of $250,000, which is over 50% savings for the taxpayers. Uh, in the private sector, most companies most companies with, employ with employment the size of the city of Sheboygan long ago have gone to outsourcing their cleaning services. And the reason for it, if they were a, a union shop, they simply can't afford it. And I don't see why we should be paying 50% more for our, for our cleaning services. This is nothing against the individuals that are doing it. I want to take personalities out of it. They do an excellent job. There's no question about that. But this is a tremendous savings over a three-year period. And as far as trying to get some concessions uh, from the unions, our track record in the last negotiations on that was very, very poor, except for the fire department. Uh, the public works department could have saved many, many jobs if they would have made concessions last July. And they refused to and basically ate their young. We laid off people. I have a couple former public works employees that live in my district that called me and said, Alderman Bourne, I would have been willing to work for 5 or $10 less an hour to keep my job. But basically, my union sold me down the river. So this is $250,000 of sure, of sure savings. The rest of it, as far as I'm concerned, with, the concept, with, with negotiating with the unions based on last year is pure speculation. This is $250,000 of savings that are guaranteed if we outsource the cleaning service. Thank you. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, may I comment on that? Certainly. Uh, you're absolutely correct, assuming we win the arbitration. If we lose the arbitration, we're going to have all of the legal costs involved for our attorneys to fight that battle. You will have signed a contract, and if they bring those employees back, you will be paying back pay for those employees. So now you're going to have back pay that's owed employees, plus legal fees, plus uh, a contract that you're going to have to negotiate yourself out of. That's one of my concerns. Thank you, uh, Tom. The, the uh, other side of that is you mentioned the negotiations last year. I agree with you, but I think when we went into negotiations last year, 
Prior to the layoffs, no union took us seriously. After the layoffs took place, and we went through negotiations with a cooperative effort with each one of our unions, we did get concessions. That's the first time in negotiations with them that we have received concessions. And we received those concessions on health care. That's a pattern that started that will be continued. But you have to start somewhere, Jim. Um, thank you, Tom. You know, what, what I'm reading into this is, uh, you know, basically there are certain fights that uh, should be fought and there are certain fights that uh, should be delayed. Um, and from, you know, we, we hire professionals in this city to manage this city and to lead this city. That's why we have people called department heads. Um, and uh, when I hear our city attorney and our director of human resources both saying that it's a, a fight that we probably won't win um, and it's not a fight that they want to fight, um, I have a tendency to listen to them. Alderman Bourne, with all due respect, the numbers don't lie. They don't lie. The numbers are real. The savings are real. Um, and those, those, I believe those numbers are correct. But there's certain fights um, that we should be fighting at certain times. And I don't believe, uh, you know, I believe the professionals in our city, being uh, Director Rice and Attorney McLean, when they say this is probably a fight that shouldn't be fought at this time, um, I have a tendency to agree with them. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. If I could just follow up uh, in, on the last, on the last now, on the last now, therefore it be resolved. Uh, Alderman Gisha and I put in where it says the, the that the uh, that the Public Works Director would implement this change as quickly as practical. My understanding from that would be, and I think from the discussion at salary and grievance last week. That, that would that would not mean instant layoffs and higher quality cleaning I think the layoffs would come if they did if we were successful so I from the discussion at uh, salary and grievance last Monday night I don't envision any immediate layoffs maybe uh, mr. rice can correct me if I'm wrong on that uh, you have to have layoffs to prompt the grievance because there has to be a resolution to what they're seeking if you don't lay off people, then there's no reason to file a grievance. So the grievance, the, the layoffs would take place, the grievance would be filed, the remedy for the grievance would be to bring the people back. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Um, okay, the 200, I have $240,000 in savings. Uh, was this contract negotiated this past year or a year, year ago with the uh, Janitors. It was part of the contracts we concluded in 09. 09. Okay. Have we have we gone back to them and say, hey, we don't want to lay you off, but can you uh, give us some uh, relief here? That's part of uh, what the what Steve said earlier of bargaining with the uh, with the union. Uh, if you were to take in and um, uh, not approve this uh, resolution. Uh, we would enter into agreements or enter into negotiations with all of our unions and see if we could save any layoffs this year through concessions and through other means <laughs> rather than losing more people. And that would be certainly the goal that I would want to uh, achieve. Um, that's why I ask you not to legislate these kind of changes. I think there's an awful lot of opportunity to talk to them, number one, because they now believe we're serious when we say we will lay off people. As we go through the budgeting process, obviously with, to keep a zero budget and have a 3% increase next year, something's got to be cut. And that may be heads. So when we talk about head count, it's a perfect opportunity to go back to our bargaining units and say, let's work together to see if we can find a different way to save money rather than laying people off. Okay, my next question is with the budget coming up uh, and we vote to keep these people, is it possible we could cut that budget by 240000 and we'd be back to square one? Uh, we, you have given us uh, the guidelines that we are to use in our budgeting process. Uh, I would hope that each one of us would be able to work together under the mayor's direction to come in at that or below that number. 
If, if, I can, if I can comment on the budgeting process, uh, we had our uh, department head meeting this morning and we discussed it and basically uh, what we're asking of the council in the budgeting process is that you allow um, the, the managers of the city, the directors and managers of the various departments of the city to come up with a budget, to come up with a balanced budget um, to submit to the council rather than legislating that this department's going to cut this and this department's going to cut that. I believe that we can sit down um, as leaders of this city, as managers of this city, the people that run the various departments and know their departments inside and out, and come up with a balanced budget without the council trying to micromanage the budgeting process. Our goal is to come up with this budget, a balanced budget, and give the council a few kicks at the cat, so to speak. In other words, we come up with a budget presented to the council and give the council a good month to review the budget. Um, and if the council doesn't agree with the budget being balanced the way it is, um, then the council can make their recommendations. That's what we're asking. Vice President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, excuse me. Attorney McLean said it well. Uh, there, some of y'all may want to say, what the heck, let's do it anyway. The savings is real. Um, I tend to be one of those people that say, you know, $250,000 for my taxpayers uh, is a substantial amount that I, that I have difficulty walking away from. And, um, you know, at, at times I'd be willing to roll the dice and, and do what I can to secure the $250,000 in savings. Um, however, I've been convinced this evening that is a foolish move uh, because of, as the mayor had said, we do have professionals in the room that uh, um, are watching out for that financially, especially if the $250,000 savings uh, ends up co actually costing us money in the end run because of grievance and back pay and contracts and so on. Um, to me, that doesn't seem, well, I would do everything I can to save $250,000, uh, risking costing us money in order to secure that does not seem a logical sense to me today. Uh, so I thank our, our uh, professional staff, I thank Attorney McLean for uh, uh, perhaps correcting the error of my ways, uh, being one of those that wanted to say previously, what the heck, let's roll the dice, let's do what we can. Um, I think it's, it's correct that at this point in time, um, the union is well clear that we're looking at $250,000 in savings. That's something that in negotiations, I think it's fairly easy to say we can save that money elsewhere if, if you know, down the road uh, and go, we can go in that direction down the road. Uh, I think they're well aware that when you do that, that's what we're going to be looking for. Um, so I will not support this at this time, uh, despite the fact that uh, initially I was gung-ho for this. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Rinfleisch. Any further discussion? Thank you, Mr. Rice. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor. Can President just, Kittleson, last minute. Can we just clarify here? Um, sure. Resolution, could you please? Um, the vote will be to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the resolution. And I vote would be to authorize accepting the bid from Quality Cleaning. A nay vote would be to not to not pass the resolution. Pass the resolution. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Thank you. Everybody got that? Roll call, please. Okay. Boren. Aye. Bowers. Aye. Excuse me? Aye. Decker? No. Hammond? No. Hannah? No. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? Uh, aye. Rinfleisch? No. Did you say no? No. Thank you. Vanderweel? No. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Tie vote. <laughs> wow. Um, I pretty much uh, spoke my piece on this issue. Um, let's make sure we don't screw this vote up here. And I vote would be to pass the resolution to go with quality cleaning. A no um, vote would be to not. For the reasons I cited earlier, uh, being the advice <laughs> of the professionals in this city, the mayor votes no. Motion fails. Ordinances introduced 10, 950 and 51 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 
8-32, resolution number 58-10-11 by Alderpersons Gishop, Balk, Boren, Hammond, and Radke authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2010 budget, establishing appropriation for TID-6 expenditures for professional services to amend the district. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Ann Bourne? Aye. 14 ayes. <coughs> Motion carries. Your Honor, uh, just a point of clarification. Uh, back on 836, uh, we voted no uh, on the, to accept and adapt the result to the report of committee. I'm sorry, 949. 949. And to not pass resolution, do we need to take action to either file it or does it just stay where it is? Are you talking about the cleaning? Yes. So we do need a motion on, on that one. Should file it. Over. Should file it. So, okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Returning to 949, we have a motion to file as the uh, as the uh, resolution failed, and a second under discussion on filing of the resolution. Oh yeah. Roll call, please, on filing of the resolution. Okay, and I vote would be to file it. Everybody get that? Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. No. Koth. No. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. No. Wangaman. No. Boren. No. Nine eyes, five noes. Document is filed. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. Nine fifty two is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Diane Tripoli, General Manager of Chevegas Entertainment Inc., requesting that they be allowed to place two cones in front of their establishment at eleven thirty three Michigan Avenue on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings to allow their limo access to pick up and drop off customers. That will be referred to PPNS. 953 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011. Will be referred to law and licensing. 9-54 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Cancer Care Fund requesting permission to hold a non-competitive two-mile, four-mile walk, jog, run on Saturday, October 16, on the sidewalk walkway in front of the YMCA. We'll be referred to public protection and safety. Um, looking for a motion to convene in closed session. President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19.851G, uh, Wisconsin statutes, for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the city with respect to litigation in which is likely to become involved relative to the North Point condominium development project. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a very loud second. <laughs> is there any discussion on moving into closed session? If there is not, roll call, please. Bowers. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. Aye. Wangaman. Aye. And Boren. Aye. 14 ayes. Like the sound effects here. Okay, uh, all aldermen are welcome to stay for the closed session meeting along with uh, Attorney well, McLean and our city clerk and anybody who may be, uh, yeah, may be uh, pertinent to the issue such as our city engineer and, uh, huh? and uh, city zoning manager. Okay. Ryan, could you close the back door, please? Sure. Thank you.